Well, this is my third day on the job. This is my first day picking up, and I'm picking up here at, let's see if I can show, I'm picking up here at Tamco, and it uh, looks like it's uh, roof shingles that I've got. I've got kind of a heavy load. It's about 50,000 pounds, 49, nine something or other. So it's about maxing me up. I didn't read my instructions before I hit the road heading to Joplin and uh, so I kind of made a mistake. I filled up my tank and then I read the work instructions which said uh, try to come here on a half tank, don't fill up before coming. And so a little unsure how that's going to work out for, um, I know I got a, went to the scale and scaled, I'm at 29. 260, so I'm not going to be overweight because I can do 80,000, but uh, my drive tires might end up being, uh, need to be adjusted, so I might have to do a fifth wheel uh, movement, which I've never done before, but apparently on Platform Science it's got a, uh, um, or on our ELD we've got a video there to uh, show how to adjust the fifth wheel. So. But this has been a very rough start. This is my first week with Maverick. And I got my truck home last Thursday. And a lot of crazy stuff. Well, first, it was, should have been very easy. I had a load swap. Saturday morning, another driver came and traded trailers there at the Flying J in Tulsa with me. And gave me my paperwork to go to where it was supposed to be dropped off. But, uh, and, and told me to call the, um, call the customer and make sure that the address is right and everything. Well, I did call and I did not make sure the address was right. Or, yeah, I, I, I guess I didn't read off the address. That's right, I didn't follow the instructions given by the driver. I didn't realize I wasn't following the instructions, but anyway, and then uh, my, my computer wasn't synced to my truck, so so I thought I had the right address, but apparently I didn't, and I didn't double check. I, I just asked him questions about like, uh, how do I get into the facility, is this right? And he was telling me things that didn't really quite match up with what I was looking at on my GPS, but they matched up closely enough that I thought we were talking about the same thing. So I got off the phone with him, uh, found out what time I could drop the load, and uh, Anyway, then I, then I, I had my my computer wasn't syncing up, and I thought, it, well, it's just probably because I'm, you know, not near a service tower or something. So as soon as I hit the road, it'll probably sync up. Well, Sunday night I left out, and it didn't sync up. But I headed on. I was kind of pressed for time because I left pretty late Sunday evening, and uh, so I, I took off out there, heading towards, um, can't remember somewhere in Oklahoma. Southern Oklahoma, a little town, little out in the middle of nowhere in Southern Oklahoma, uh, to drop off a, um, it's like, uh, I can't remember what he called it, it's dehydrated corn byproduct after they make ethanol out of corn, and then they feed it to cows, um, and then he would in turn sell it to other farmers and give it to his own cows. Let's see, so I get to my, I get to the city that I thought I was supposed to go to, um, which was in Elgin, Oklahoma, and there I was able to get my computer, played around with my computer and figured out how to get it to sync up. And then I did, then all I got all these messages in uh, that had been like in queue but hadn't come to my computer yet. And I start reading through the messages and I find that they're loading me with the shingles right now. So I find that I'm at the wrong address. I accidentally took it to the third party freight, uh, I guess the uh, the billing address is where I took it to. And then I'm, so I'm looking at my paper, oh there's the, the consignee destination address, different address. I don't know how I got that confused, but anyway, so now it's my first day on the job, I'm in the wrong city, and stressed out that looking okay how do I correct this mistake I need to think about 
uh, when do I do should I leave now should I start my 10 hour break in the middle of the night um, it's pretty late at night it's like 11 or so so anyway and I've gone in the wrong direction about three hours in the wrong direction now I need to gotten to southern Oklahoma now I need to go to northern Oklahoma and uh, it took me up to uh, Burbank Oklahoma and so I decided to just head there and get there then so these lots of problems that was my first problem went you know I don't know how many miles out of route 200 300 miles out of route um, probably about 200 so now now I'm at my uh, I'm at my destination and I did notice that it said that there was overnight parking but it's on a country road and I've got to take a left hand turn up into his property. I turn in there and it's very dark, it's out in the middle of the country. And the gate is shut, the big double swinging gates are shut, but the gate that has the cattle guard, like the, the metal piping that the cattle can't walk across, that's open, I can just go on through. But I really don't know, like, is that too much weight for my truck? So I didn't want to risk going in there and also, I was kind of worried about, you know, my headlights being on on this guy's property. Um, and the house is up in the front there. Don't want to make a bunch of noise. And I don't. And the other gate's unlocked, but I don't want to just open it and let myself in. Uh, I've already probably got my, my uh, company mad at me for going out of the route so badly. I don't want to have the customer mad at me too. So, I decided to just pull off to the side of the road. The shoulder wasn't all that wide, but you could get out on the grass pretty far. So I was about, ended up being about six foot off of outside of the white line. And then there was also the rumble strip between me and the white line. So I thought, well, that's pretty safe. And it's like three in the morning, 3.30 in the morning. And I've got to get up at seven. So it's only like three hours. Of all right, thank you. So now I'm delivering my shingles to Buccaneer Homes and Looks like it's like a mobile home manufacturer here. So this uh, this load was actually really easy. It was my first time doing straps, so I think I went a lot slower than I should have. Uh, but things went really quickly as far as unstrapping and getting everything um, everything unloaded. While he's out there finishing up unloading, I'll uh, go ahead and finish yesterday's story. So, the thing I didn't say, whenever I pulled into uh, the customer's parking lot, or the customer's driveway, and then I realized, well, I can't park here, I need to, need to get out back on the road. Well, as I was walking back out to my truck, I realized that I had hit a mailbox. And so, that was like, oh no, first day out, delivering to a customer, I, I, I uh, get in an accident, you know, and that's what happened. Uh, I guess that's <laughs> the experience of new guys, but um, anyway, so I got back out on the road, tried to find a place to turn around, um, like the nearest regular intersection was like, I don't know, uh, of a major street was like 20 miles up the road, and uh, I'm worried about my clock, too. So anyway, I decided to turn around like a half a mile up the road in a little neighborhood. Almost got my truck stop, stuck there, but didn't. Got through with that okay. Um, I looked on the, uh, Jeep, the Google Maps and I noticed there was actually a truck parked back there on that road. So I knew trucks could get back there, but for me it was kind of a difficult maneuver. Anyway, I safely got back to the customer, parked my truck there along the side of the road, um, went to bed for about three hours. And then uh, got up the next morning uh, about seven o'clock. Um, as I was uh, finishing getting ready, I noticed the, uh, cus the customer had come down to open up the gate for me. So he let me in. Um, while I was getting untarped and everything, I noticed that my tire was damaged. So then I realized I must have hit the mailbox a little bit more substantially than I thought I had when I looked at it last night. I was able to just pull the mailbox out from underneath the truck. It was like, welded to an aluminum or welded to a, uh, a steel, uh, I guess like an old wagon wheel. And um, anyway, so talked to the customer about that. Apparently it had sentimental value to him. We went out and looked at it. It wasn't really damaged that much. It was, dis it was displaced from its location. Um, it had come off the rocks that it was set on. 
and uh, it looked like it needed some new rocks in order to be level again. So, anyway, ah, it was a stressful day. Uh, but, I oh, and I had a I was about out of hours and I had to ask um, the customer if it would be okay to spend my 10 hour DOT break, finish out my 10 hour DOT break on his property. And he said yes, that would be fine. And uh, the guy turned out to be a Christian um, and invited me into his house, uh, gave, co gave me some coffee and uh, invited me into his living room and wanted me to watch uh, Les Feldick uh, videos with him on on TV so we just had a great time talking about the Lord talking about the Bible ended up uh, discussing eschatology quite a bit um, anyway so everything actually worked out really well I was re real glad to meet this guy's old 77 year old man real nice guy and uh, spend spend the afternoon with him and uh, so you know when I'm thinking back what my uh, and I ended up filling out an accident report and everything. Um, nothing major was damaged. The tire was a little scuffed and the, we were able to get, he and I went down there, put some rocks underneath the mailbox and got the mailbox looking just fine. Um, but what, one of the things I, I'm thinking as a takeaway for this for me was whenever I called the customer Saturday morning to confirm the address, there were two things I was wanting to do. Confirm the address and find out how soon I could deliver it Monday morning. And first, I made two mistakes. One is I shouldn't have called that early on Saturday morning. I kind of felt guilty about that, but I was just trying. I was trying to make sure I got all my ducks in the row, ducks in a row as quickly as possible. But I shouldn't have called that early. It was like 9:18 on Saturday morning. And then the next thing I did wrong is I was worried about how soon I could deliver Monday morning because I was trying to make a full day of it. You know, get on the early schedule and just max out my hours. And uh, ultimately, that boils down to a better paycheck, right? And it says the love of money is the root of all evil. And as I'm thinking, prioritizing, finding out how soon I can deliver it, I forget the other aspect of it, and that is to read off the address to the customer. We did talk about what, what it looks like on Google Maps and where to turn in and stuff, but I forgot to ask the address, to confirm the address. So, a lesson learned, um, you know, uh, just... Uh, Focus on, on doing a quality job. Don't focus on, so much on, don't focus on making a bunch of money. You end up uh, losing money in the long run. Um, and uh, focus on the details. Um, one of the things that, uh, one of the scriptures I was reading, since I'm sharing yesterday's story, I'll share yesterday's manna. Uh, I was reading Psalm 119, or some, sorry, Psalm 19, which uh, ends the psalm saying, um, about God's commandments. Uh, more to be desired are they go than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. You're just thinking about that last part there. In the keeping of his commandments there is great reward. Knowing his commandments and keeping them. And, uh, you know, is it, you know, is it Maybe as a trucker, I better be sure to keep my company's commandments and do, do what they uh, require of me, and I want to try to do that. But how much, and there's reward in that, you know, I keep my job. And uh, a lot of the commandments that they have, the rules that they have are there for a reason. Keep people from making mistakes, keep people from getting hurt. Um, and the same is true of uh, God's commandments. They're there for a reason, they're there for our good. But anyway, so for... I guess for me, for the takeaway for that verse for the day is like uh, the importance of keeping God's commandments. And really, that's that is kind of a, a command, you know, don't love money. And uh, so I think it, maybe I wasn't being real greedy, but anyway, just a little, little, it goes a long way. Uh, and focusing on doing a good quality job, doing what we're supposed to be doing, and uh, making sure everything is safe. That's that's uh, the priority in my job and it's the priority in life is to focus on doing what God uh, wants us to do being pleasing to him and we've got lots of treasure in heaven and that's that's where my treasure is and hopefully that's where your treasure is and uh, thankful to have a nice job but also thankful to have a, um, a home in heaven waiting for me um, at the resurrection anyway I <laughs> uh, hope to see you guys next time